A sand battery is a tank of sand which can be heated by electricity from solar panels to several hundred degrees. Sand batteries became very popular a few years ago when this Finnish guy suggested not to throw away excess electricity from solar panels, but to use it to heat sand up to 600 degrees Celsius during the summer months. This tens of tons of hot sand will be used to heat a house in winter, and the thermal energy is taken through this pipe at the periphery of the tank, as a result of which the temperature of the periphery can decrease up to 100 degrees, which radically reduces these heat losses. We know that such a large number of solar panels can fully supply a house with electricity for all the days of a cloudy winter, but similar cases lead to the fact that in summer the same number of panels will generate a large excess of electricity. This excess electricity in summer should heat several tens of tons of sand, which will completely provide heating of a house in winter and hot water supply for all 12 months a year. Today, these Finnish guys are building large sand batteries for several thousand tons of sand or other cheap materials for heating tens and hundreds of houses. Unfortunately, these solutions are not suitable for small sand batteries for winter heating of just one house, because reducing the size of a battery leads to a radical increase in the impact of these heat losses, and therefore the small battery is not able to store the summer heat until winter. But this video will describe an innovation which allows a battery to be reduced in size by several dozen times to fully provide a single house with heating, hot water and electricity. A house must have 35 kW of solar panels which will produce this electricity during sunny and cloudy hours of all 12 months a year, but this electricity will be taken by the house for various electrical appliances. The difference between these two columns results in this amount of unnecessary electricity, which will heat 98 tons of sand in the battery. This will be those heat losses from the sand battery, and this is the extraction of its heat for home heating and hot water supply. You see that during these 5 months this influx of energy into the sand is greater than these outfluxes, and therefore those 98 tons of sand are heated in this way, from 100 degrees Celsius at the beginning of April to 500 degrees at the end of September. But after that the average temperature of those 98 tons of sand will decrease in this way during the remaining 7 months. This was a calculation for a house of 100 square meters in this region of Central Europe, which has this climate, and we know that this percentage of sunny hours of the winter months in the United States or Canada is several times better. Those tens of tons of sand must be placed inside this circular wall with such dimensions and cheap sand heaters by the solar panel electricity are located in this zone. These are two layers of thermal insulation, mineral wool or urea formaldehyde foam. These are two layers of rigid thermal insulation, expanded clay or granules of blessed furnace slag or cheap recycled crushed or rated concrete. These are my estimates of the total cost of building the sand battery, and we see this total cost again here in this table of the total construction cost of the entire system for electricity, home heating and hot water supply for one house. Of course, it is expensive, but it will be cheaper in other regions, especially for sunny winters of the United States, and owners of the German house save almost $4,000 annually due to the fact that this energy is free. In addition, they do not spend money on the construction of a traditional system for home heating and hot water supply, and on connecting the house to the electricity grid, which can be very expensive, especially in the case of outlying houses. Also, these prices can be cheaper if the homeowners assemble the panels and electric accumulators themselves. Let me explain why these heat losses from the sand battery are so small. First of all, pay attention to these heat extractions for home heating and hot water supply, and these extractions must be carried out from this gap between the two layers of thermal insulation. Therefore, fans must create this air circulation through the gap which is 10 cm thick, and the hot air transfers its heat through this heat exchanger to this water of the home heating system. This heat extraction results in a radical decrease in temperature here, which reduces these heat losses by two or three times during this month, but the reduction for this month is insignificant, because these extractions are small. 
All this was described in more detail in this my old video, which also describes more precise explanations of the effect of reducing the heat losses and other options for extracting heat from the gap. Changing this water flow allows us to change the power of this heat extraction for home heating in this hot water tank, and this power is described here, where I also added heat extraction through this spiral pipe. It is located in this 10 cm layer of sand and gravel mixture, and first of all this water goes through the spiral pipe, as a result of which the temperature here is radically reduced, which reduces heat loss in these directions. After this the water goes through the heat exchanger and returns to the home heating system. Comparing this extraction power from the spiral pipe and the gap with this required power indicates such a power deficit, which requires additional heat extraction through these pipes near the center of the sand battery. Therefore, from the middle of December to early May, this air first moves through the gap, then it moves through the central pipes and goes to the heat exchanger. Changing this air flow allows us to change the temperature of this water, which is important for this hot water tank. My calculations indicate such temperatures of the sand better in the middle of different months, and for example, comparing this column with this column allows us to see that effect of decreasing the temperature at the periphery. But this effect is not radical, and it is almost absent during this month when we are forced to take the heat through the central pipes. 